Hey everybody, Morgan here. I uh, wanted to do a quick video just kind of demonstrating how to wire a DNA board. Uh, DNA 20, DNA 30, they're both wired the same way. Uh, I found that when I went to s create my first DNA box mod, I found that a lot of um, reviewers out there, nobody was really showing how to wire the actual board. Um, a lot of finished product videos, even some build videos, but the board itself was a little bit of a mystery. Um, and after following, you know, the steps that are listed in the in the data sheet you can download from Evolve, I found out, you know, the ways to do it, and I kind of figured out on my own. But I thought I'd make this video just to kind of show y'all how to wire one of these little boards. Um, you know, how I do it, some of the tr tips and tricks that I've learned while doing a few of these, uh, and just kind of go over the basics of the board. Um, so. We'll get right to that in just a second. All right, so I zoomed out a little bit here just so I could kind of show you my workstation. Um, I use, you know, one of these little magnifying glass third hands. I find that it makes it really easy to uh, work on the chip when you can have something holding it in place. Uh, also, you'll notice here that I do have a piece of felt. It's one of those adhesive backed pieces of felt. You can get them at Michael's or any, you know, hobby store. And essentially, I stuck it to my workstation here. And I did that because the felt... Um, you know, has a rougher texture. So when you're laying the wires in, I'll show you in a little bit, it actually helps to grip the wires so that, to hold them in place before you can solder them. Um, now you could use just a, a cloth or a towel. It doesn't have to be a piece of felt. I just found that this was, you know, easy to use over and over again. Um, but the, the third hand is definitely the most important thing in this process. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to clip the board in and then actually take the wires um, and get them all in place. And I'll kind of go over the different inputs and where each wire is supposed to go. Okay, so now you can see I've got all my wires laid out here. And what I did is I went ahead and pre-cut them um, to about probably a little over two inches, two and a half inches each. And I went ahead and pre-tinned all the wires um, so that they're ready to be installed. It makes it a lot easier um, once they're in there. So go ahead and pre-tin all your wires, have everything set up the way you need it beforehand. Just get everything nice and organized. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and take the DNA board and what I'm going to do is if you look on the front here Let me see if I can't focus in on this and give you an up close on these labels Bear with me just a second here Okay, hopefully you can read that um, if you look up in the top left corner over here, you'll see there's down and Then charge okay, and what that is is this bottom left corner the two holes closest to the screen cable that's going to be your micro USB charging connector if you decide to include one of those on your mod. Um, you'll wire your positive on the in inside and the negative on that outside corner. Um, going along here, we'll just look across. Most of it's nicely labeled, which makes it really easy. Um, and once again, you can download the data sheet if you'd like uh, that gives you a diagram of everything, but it's pretty, pretty easy to understand. Um, the furthest corner over here is going to be your battery, positive and negative there. That goes out to your battery tray, uh, whether you're using a LiPo pack or a, you know, battery tray like I will be, um, you can solder it in directly there. Uh, now coming up on the top of the board, these are going to be your switches, okay? Your up and down buttons, your power buttons. On this side, you're going to have your down, positive, and negative, okay? So that's what you're going to wire to your tactile switch for, for the down option. Um, going around the corner here, this is your out. That's going to go to your 510 connection. Um, that'll that'll lead to your atomizer. Um, coming over on this corner here, uh, this is going to be kind of a combo of buttons here. Um, on the front right here, you've got up. That's going to be your up switch, but you'll see it says up slash pot. Um, that's if you decide to include a potentiometer. Um, I won't be doing that in this build, but that, that's where you would wire one in if you decided to do that. Um, but the, the two here in the center, that's going to be your up button, positive and negative. Um, and then over on the corner here is going to be your fire button, positive and negative. So that's what you'll run to your fire switch. So those are the layouts uh, of the wires on the board. Um, you can do different color wires. I know in the first couple to keep track of everything, I would do like, you know, blue and yellow wire on this one or, you know, green and red and kind of mix it up so I could keep track of which one went where once everything was inside the mod. Um, but now I just use black and red. I mean, there's really no need uh, once you kind of get the hang of it. Um, now, wire size, uh, they recommend for the battery and I believe the 510 connector, the output, uh, to use at least 20 gauge wire or, or they recommend 20. Bare minimum, I believe, is either 22 or 24 gauge. Um, I generally do 22 gauge across the board. Uh, haven't had any issues with that. Uh, 22 gauge, haven't had any overheating or anything like that. 
Um, but you, you, you know, it's never going to hurt to use 20 gauge, something a little bit thicker on that battery connection. Um, but I wouldn't go any thinner than 22 gauge. I think they say you can go 24, but, uh, I played on the safe side, just stick with 22. That's, that's nice and thin enough to work with. It's easy to bend into place to get it where you need it. Uh, it's not as thick as 20 gauge, but you know, 20, 24 would be cutting it a little bit close. Um, so that's kind of the layout of the board. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and clip it into these, in my alligator clamp here on my third hand. Um, and go ahead and, and show you how I do that. What I like to do first is since the bottom of the board has the, the majority of the connections, I go ahead and up here on this top left hand corner, you've got a little bit of space on the front and the back if you look there. There's nothing that you're going to hurt by clamping it in. I like to go ahead and clamp it directly on that corner. And be careful when you're clamping it not to um, hit this, this up button that's built into the board. Um, you know, you just don't want to mess up any, any part of the board. Um, you can see that I've wrapped my uh, alligator clamp with electrical tape. Um, that's something that, you know, you can do if you choose. I think it adds a little bit of, uh, you know, insulation, a little bit of protection there on the board. So I go ahead and clamp the board in place just like that. It holds it nice and firm. Um, and then the next thing I like to do is I like to take my wires and I go ahead and I feed them all through. Um, so I'll go ahead and take all of my connections. And what I'll do is I'll come up from underneath and actually push them through. And I'll kind of show you that here. I come up from behind like that, and then this felt, that's where it really comes in handy. Um, with this felt, let me zoom out a little bit so you can see, this felt really grips the tip of the wire so that when I push it in there, it's not going anywhere. It's going to stay snug, snug until I'm ready to solder it. Um, so I go around the board and I just essentially feed all of these in on this one half of the board, like so. I apologize, it's a little hard to do this on camera. But I go through and I feed them all in like that. So let me go ahead and finish doing that and then we'll come right back and uh, I'll show you how to solder it. Okay, so now that you have all the wires set up kind of like this right here, um, you can see I've got them all kind of positioned. Let me see if I can get above it to really show you. I've got them all kind of positioned to where the board is just high enough off of the uh, felt to create tension on the wire so that the felt can grip the other end of the wire and keep them in place when you solder. And I don't know if I'm be able to get in close enough for you to see, but there are little tiny heads of wire sticking out in each of those holes. And I've got everything set up except for the um, battery connector, which I generally wait until the last minute to do that. Depending on where your battery box is, sometimes you can have a hard time feeding those wires through if you do it up front. Uh, and then just to show you kind of my soldering setup here, I've got my soldering station set up at uh, 380 degrees, um, and essentially that seems to be a good temperature. Uh, the solder that I use is nothing fancy, it's just your typical Radio Shack brand uh, 0.032 diameter uh, solder. You can see right here, rosin core solder. Um, and it seems to work well, it seems to work just fine. Um, obviously you want to make sure to tend your soldering iron, which I'm sure you're all aware of. Uh, before you get started. So I'll go ahead and put the camera over there and I'll go over these solder points the best I can on camera, kind of give you an idea of how I do it, um, let you see how quick it goes once you really have them in place. So bear with me just a second here. Okay, hopefully you can see this up close pretty well. I got in as close as I could, uh, just where I still think I can get around it and solder. Um, I went ahead and pre tin my soldering tip, um, as you can see there, but go ahead and make sure you get that nice and tin. You know, go ahead and put some extra solder on there, make sure it's nice and ready to go flick off a little excess there and what i do is i take now i use the uh, little flat tip soldering tips not the rounded tip because it makes it much easier to get in these little areas and what i like to do is i take my solder and this is just like any other connection that you would solder i come up to the edge and i make contact with not only the wire but the board itself just like that get a little hot put a little solder on there get it nice and heated up and then draw straight up like that and that's really it um, you know, it gives it a nice solid hold, you know, now these boards are, you know, coated pretty well. You don't want to hold too much heat on them for a long amount of time, but as long as you're just coming in from the edge like that, getting that wire and that component, getting it nice and hot, and then applying your solder directly to the joint and not your soldering iron, you can get a pretty decent connection. I apologize. These are going to look sloppy being done on camera. It's a little hard to get in here, um, but I'll go ahead and just go around and finish these up just to kind of show you what it'll look like. You want it to kind of look like a little Hershey kiss almost, just a little dollop. Just like that. That one's a little ugly. You can go back and kind of clean them up a little bit if you need to, just kind of draw up on the joint. 
and just kind of work your way around. And be as careful as you can not to come in contact with any of these components on the board if you can. You, you know, you don't want to hit any of those and mess them up. Now, once you have a good connection on all of those, you can see uh, the hole here in the center of those uh, four on this row right here, um, that's where the potentiometer would go if you were using one. Like I said, I'm not using one on this mod, uh, but that is the spot that it would go. So if you go back over it, you can see back here, you've got your, let me get my pen out here so I can show you. Back here, you've got your charging negative, your charging positive right here, okay, going towards the screen. This is where your battery negative and positive will be under this clamp once you solder those in. Um, over here, we've got down positive for your down button, up positive. You've got your out to your atomizer, your 510 connector, negative, and then positive right here. Over here, we've got our fire button, negative and positive for our firing switch. Skip that slot where the potentiometer would go. And then you've got your positive and your negative for your up button. Um, so that's kind of where all the switches would be wired in. Now I like to go back after I'm done, obviously, and clean this up a little bit. Take your clippers and kind of clip just the tips off of these solder joints. So just kind of do that. You don't have to be very perfect, but just kind of clean them up a little bit. Go back and clip off the excess on each of these one at a time. That one. Of course, this is hard to do on camera. But essentially, just clean them up, make them look a little bit nicer. And that's pretty much it for wiring the board. All right, guys, that is how to wire a DNA 30 board. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, if you'd like to see other videos of me continuing this mod, maybe finishing off the box, showing you how I put everything together, uh, let me know as well. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, please feel free to ask. Um, you know, I, I want to be here to help people that might be a little confused with it. I uh, wish I had someone to kind of show me how to do it along the way. So if you need anything at all, just feel free to let me know. And uh, thank you guys for watching. All right, have a good one.